Yesterday, May 28th, a big story broke that has been so painfully obvious to those of us paying attention to the crisis in the church for the past year or longer that it doesn't seem like that big of a story. But for those of us who are just coming to grips with the corruption of the hierarchy at the hands of modernists and sexual deviants, that story, or rather, series of stories that broke on the same day, serves as a giant red pill for those just waking up to the state of things. It would be anyway if they were paying attention. Because people can see the obvious connection and the obvious pattern. Let's have a look at what I'm talking about because it involves the entire reason for the decades-long crisis in the church coming to light for everyone to see. Now, go ahead and click like and subscribe if you've been watching these videos or listening to the podcasts on an audio-only platform, but haven't done so yet. Thanks. I think YouTube throttled my channel recently. Growth has slowed pretty severely. I'll go into that in a live stream in the near future. Anyway, so on May 28th, the story broke that Cardinal Whirl did in fact know about restrictions placed on former Cardinal McCarrick. Whirl's not going to be that central of a figure in my story here because Whirl is not that important in my mind. Documentation was made public that fully exonerated the claims made by Archbishop Vigano about restrictions being placed on McCarrick and that the hierarchy knew about McCarrick's crimes and many of them didn't care at all. This is, again, not a surprise to those of us who are paying attention. After all, it was at the installation mass for Archbishop Wilton Gregory that we saw Cardinal Mahoney parading around publicly as if he hadn't been one of the very worst abusers of power in the sex abuse crisis. But I want to start looking at this by first hopping into our Wayback Machine by looking at Twitter, specifically at the denunciation of claims made by Vigano by Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church, who, by the way, has apparently been in the hospital recovering from surgery. So pray for his recovery and his conversion to the real Catholic faith. So we can file this take under, well, that didn't age well. So this is a 15 thread or 15 tweet Twitter rant. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because I don't want to waste all of your time. We're just going to get to the, to the juicy part here. Let's start from the beginning. Thread. One, the most shocking aspect of last week's coordinated attack on Pope Francis, thanks to Archbishop hashtag Vigano's testimony in scare quotes, which is being discredited by the hour, <laughs> is how former champions of the papacy rush to attack and condemn and de attempt to delegitimize Pope Francis. It ended, ca it ended caused immense pain, nice typo there, James, among the faithful, at a time when many, if not all, were demoralized by the latest sex abuse crisis. Three, some U.S. Catholics, even bishops, who under Popes John Paul II and Benedict XVI acted as if any disagreement with a Pope was tantamount to dissent or heresy, heaped scorn on Francis, called for his resignation, and publicly sided with his accuser based on unsubstantiated charges. <laughs> unsubstantiated. Four, but now what will they do? Because the Vigano testimony is being discredited piece by piece, hour by hour. At worst, Vigano only got very minor details wrong, as has come out in, uh, since. But the but he was correct on everything and of every substantial thing. And five, the latest reports show that Archbishop Vigano's much touted sanctions against former Cardinal McCarrick appear to have been private never formalized at all by Benedict, and were more of a recommendation, which blows the bottom out of Vigano's central claim against Pope Francis. And that's where this why you can file this under things that did not age well, because of the news that we're about to dive into right now. So what's the story? Headline, McCarrick Correspondence Confirms Restrictions, Speaks to Whirl and China, published by Crux, who claim to be taking the Catholic Pulse. This was published on May 28th. Keep that date in your mind. Also note that this article is written by Crux staff. That's interesting. Typically a staff credit for an article is done because the entire staff agrees with an editorial, but this isn't an editorial. So why the anonymity? Are they afraid of retaliation? Again, this is why you should support independent Catholic commentary and media. Crux obtained correspondence between the Vatican and Ted McCarrick from a former assistant of McCarrick's. It details the formal sanctions imposed on McCarrick by the Vatican in 2008, McCarrick's acknowledgement of the sanctions, 
and his contesting at least one of the specific sanctions. What were these sanctions? McCarrick was not to travel without express Vatican permission. He was to resign from all roles at the Vatican and within the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, and he was told to stop going to Rome. That is what he contested, for obvious reasons, because he is a politically powerful cardinal. Remember, his role at the 2013 conclave is uh, one that has led to serious speculation about the state of the papacy today. In one letter, McCarrick actually said that the Vatican wanted to avoid bad press, which is why the Vatican never made the restrictions known to the public, and he's probably right about that. McCarrick maintained correspondence with Rome during this time and eventually resumed his restricted practices in a move that can only be seen as his testing to see if the Vatican would actually enforce the ruling against him, which they didn't because the Vatican was so afraid of bad press in the aftermath of the 2002-2004 to sex abuse crisis, and they were afraid of the Lavender Mafia that was essentially running the place, that no action was taken. McCarrick resumed traveling and even engaged in diplomatic work for both Benedict and Francis, including the China deal that sold the faithful out to the Antichrist Church in China. He regularly wrote to Francis from 2013 to 2017 during his activities, keeping Francis and the Holy See informed of everything he was doing on behalf of the church. And by the church, I mean mostly for himself. Again, this is shown in the correspondence leaked by a former assistant of Ted McCarrick's. There's an underlying theme of cowardice in all of this because they didn't go public. And if they had gone public, we wouldn't be even having these troubles today, at least to this degree. McCarrick even discussed these restrictions with Cardinal Wuerl in 2008, according to the leaked documents, whose guidance on, on Wuerl he called a great help and great fraternal support. So remember, when, Car when Cardinal Donna Wuerl, what kind of man calls himself Donna, said he was shocked to have discovered what McCarrick did and how utterly disingenuous it came off. There's a reason he sounded like he was lying, and that's because he was lying. He knew about restrictions placed against McCarrick in 2008, which means the accusations of sexual misconduct. Now, Crux continues to call these restrictions informal. I suppose they can get away with that because the restrictions were not made publicly known until the summer of shame in 2018 out of cowardice and Crux has to cover its backside because just recently they called Vigano's testimony discredited, which is laughable, and we don't trust the establishment media from the, even Catholic media for anything. But this story gets better because of another story that broke on the same day. Headline, Pope Francis, I knew nothing about McCarrick from the National Catholic Register. Note that it was on the same day, May 28th, as if someone had tipped off the Pope that Crux was going to release a story that was very, very bad for him so that he could get out ahead of it. In the world of politics, this happens all the time, especially when biased establishment media are involved. The article is framed in this being a response to a seemingly random question asked of the Pope about the Vigano testimony from August of 2018. And that may be true, but the timing here is so comically suspicious that I can't help but wonder if someone from Crux tipped off the Holy See about the piece they were going to publish, or if the release of the McCarrick documents used in the article was in fact done by the Holy See itself in some capacity, or if the leaker had been caught, and if he had been, pray for that man. Either way, you don't get statements like this on the exact same topic at the exact same time in the real world. These kinds of coincidences do not happen, especially in things that are so politically charged as the McCarrick and Vigano issues have been. On to the statement of the Pope. Francis told his interviewer, quote, I knew nothing of McCarrick. Of course, nothing. I've said it several times. I knew nothing. And he reminded everybody about how he acted before official Vatican sanctions came down by removing him from the College of Cardinals and whatnot. Of course, that doesn't negate the documentation that clearly shows that he knew about McCarrick violating the sanctions imposed upon him and that he clearly knew about McCarrick's crimes before inflicting him upon the Chinese Catholics. But perhaps the most amusing thing said by the Pope in this was his defense of remaining largely silent on the Vigano accusations. Quote again, The reason for my silence was, first of all, that the proofs were there. I told you, judge for yourself. It was really an act of trust. He invoked our blessed Lord, who, quote, In moments of rage, it is better to remain silent because the Lord has shown us this pass, path and I follow him. But the doozy. His silence was, and again I quote, 
It was a silence based on trust in you, journalists, and the result was good, better than if I had started to explain, to defend myself. You judge evidence in hand. <laughs> End quote. The result was good, better than if he'd explained it himself. Think about that for a moment. No right-thinking person trusts the media anymore. Across the board, trust in journalists and establishment media is at an all-time low, and for good reason. If you need any further indication that we live in clown world, I want you to really wrap your mind around the fact that the Pope of the Catholic Church received a better defense against the accusations of malfeasance from the media than he would have been able to deliver himself, that the secular media is on the side of the Pope, while simultaneously this same media blows out of proportion stories of sex abuse while hiding the same sex-attracted nature of this crisis from the general population. I can forgive the secular media for not understanding modernism and the infiltration of the church. That isn't surprising, but the fact that we find ourselves in a situation where the secular media is defending a pope against allegations that he covered up the crimes of notorious sexual predators is telling. While preparing this video, I decided to check to see what the secular media is saying about the McCarrick documents and the implications for the Pope. Only the New York Post and Yahoo News covered the documents, but did so in a way that provides Francis with cover, while the Wall Street Journal ran a similar story to the one I cited from the National Catholic Register. Now, imagine if, shall we say, the year was not 2019, but it was 2009, and Benedict XVI was unquestionably Pope, and had come out that he shielded a predator like McCarrick, knew fully of his crimes, and instead reinstated him into active service after John Paul II had imposed sanctions on him out of the public eye. I want you to think about what that would look like. It wouldn't be anything like what we're seeing with Francis, because Francis actively is given a pass on all sorts of things by the media. Why? It's because he is on the side of the transnational rootless elites who want to create a global borderless utopia. It's a materialist ver vision of an earthly paradise that stands contrary to the faith, and the media institutions have long been on the side of promoting that vision of the future. It is a triumph of the French Revolution on a global scale. It is, the, it is a boot stamping on the face of a nation forever. So don't be surprised by this. Just take pleasure in knowing that Archbishop Vigano's testimony has been proven correct yet again. As usual, you can read the sources for this video or any video I make on the sources blog, returntotradition.org, which is linked in the description of this video. Read the articles for yourself and ask yourself about the timing and why the media coverage is simply the Pope denying things he's denied before, while the Catholic news sources are at least reporting on the documents getting leaked. It's almost as if the story is going to get buried as a non-story, with the largely non-Catholic public as well as those still sleepwalking through the crisis in the church among our co-religionists are the main targets for the misinformation being peddled by Yahoo News, the Wall Street Journal, and even mainline Catholic media outlets like the National Catholic Register, which is the print arm of EWTN, by the way. This says nothing of the defense continuing to be played by people like professional Francis fan fiction writer Austin Ivory, who still calls Vigano a liar, or the numerous others who have made their careers defending the indefensible coming out of Rome these days. It's all to be expected, and it's all very tiresome, to be honest, but we shouldn't be really surprised. Given that aside from the few of us paying attention, most Catholics are blissfully unaware of things going on, save for the scandals in the news. Things remain business as usual in the church in the West, despite a crisis that has no end in sight. And that is a tragedy in all of this. Archbishop Vigano was right. They all knew about McCarrick and did nothing when he violated his sanctions, and then even lifted them by having him engage in public work for the Holy See. And now they've washed their hands of the whole affair, with the media being complicit. It'd be funny if it wasn't so tragic. Thank you for listening and for your support. If you want to support my work, there are options in the description of this video. Please pray and fast for the liberation of the church and an end to the crisis of modernism and the sexual perversion that inevitably comes with it. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.